Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Spark Summit 2017. Brought to you by Databricks. You are watching theCUBE at Spark Summit 2017. I'm David Goad here with my friend George Gilbert. How are you doing, George? Good. All right, but the, the man of the hour is over to my left. Right. I'd like to introduce a Databricks partner, and his name is Octavian Tanas. He's the SVP for Data on Tap, Software and Systems Group at NetApp. Octavian, welcome Thank you for having us. All right, well you have kind of an interesting background. We were chatting before. You started as an engineer, developer? Yeah, so I'm uh, in an executive role right now, but uh, I have an interesting trajectory. Most people in a similar role come from a product management or sales background. I'm a former engineer and uh, you know, somebody that has uh, a passion for, for technology and, and uh, now for customers and, and building interesting technologies. Okay, well if you have a passion for this technology then, I'd like to get your take on the marketplace a little bit. Uh, tell us about the evolution of the mainstream and, and what you see changing. Well, I think um, you know, data is the new currency of the 21st century, right? And you have uh, a desire and, and uh, a thirst to get more out of your data. Mm -hmm. um, so you have uh, developers, you have you know, analysts um, looking to build the next great application to mine uh, you know, data for great business outcomes. So um, uh, NetApp as a data management company is very, very much interested in working with companies like Databricks um, and, and a bunch of hyperscalers to enable that type of solutions that either enable in-place analytics or, or data lakes or you know, solutions that um, you know, really enable developers and, and analysts to, to harness that part of the data. Mm -hmm. So, um, maybe walk us through what you've seen to date in terms of the mainstream use cases for big data, and then tell us where you think they're going, and you know, but what walls need to be pushed back with the constituent technologies to get there? So, um, originally what I've seen, a lot of people investing in, um, in data lake technologies. Uh, data lakes in a nutshell are, are massive containers that are simple to manage, uh, scalable, performant, where you can aggregate a bunch of data sources and then you can run you know, a MapReduce type of, um, of workload you know, to correlate that data, to, to harness that part of data, to draw conclusions. Um, that was sort of the, you know, the, uh, the, the original track and, and over time I think there's um, a desire, given the, how dynamic and diverse uh, is the, the, the data is, to to do um, to build a lot of this analytics in in line, in real time, right? And that's where a company like Databricks comes, and that's where the cloud comes, um, to to enable both the agility as well as the uh, you know the, the type of real time behavior to getting those analytics, right? Now this is your first Spark Summit? Uh, absolutely, uh, happy to be here. <laughs> oh I know, it's just the first day, but what have you learned so far? Any great questions uh, from other participants? Well I think uh, I see a lot of people innovating very fast. Um, I see both established players paying attention, I see new, new companies um, looking to, um, you know, to take advantage of this, this revolution that is happening um, you know, around data, uh, and data services and, uh, and data analytics. Maybe tell us a little more what we were talking about um, before we started, about how some customers who are very sensitive to their data want to keep it in their data centers or, you know, or Equinix, which still counts as pretty much theirs, but the compute is off in the cloud somewhere. So, uh, as you can imagine, we, we work with a lot of enterprise you know, customers, and, and one thing that uh, I've learned in the last couple of years is that um, their thought process has evolved. Um, you know, banks, uh, you know, large financial institutions, uh, two years ago were not even considering the cloud. And um, I, I see that now, you know, changing. And I, I see them wanting to operate like a cloud provider. I see them want to take advantage of the flexibility um, and the agility of, of the cloud. I see them being more comfortable with the type of, um, you know, security you know, capabilities that the cloud offers, you know, today. So security has been, you know, probably the, the, the most uh, uh, troublesome issue that, you know, folks have looked to overcome. And then the gravity of the data, 
the reality is that the data is very distributed and, and dynamic, diverse in, in nature, as I mentioned earlier. Um, there's data created uh, at the edge, data created in, in the data center, and, and people want to, to be able to you know, process that data in, in real mm -hmm. time, regardless where data is, without necessarily having to, to move it in, in some cases. Mm -hmm. So, um, everybody's looking for data management you know, solutions that enable mobility, you know, governments, management of, of that data, and this um, enabling analytics, you know, wherever that data is. Mm -hmm. There's a, you said some really interesting things in there, which is, I mean, I can see where, like the customer's data center, where they're, you know, extended to Equinix, where they want to bring the compute to the data because the data is heavier than the compute. Mm -hmm. But what about on the edge? You know, does it make sense to bring, is there enough data there to keep it there and bring compute down to the edge? Or do you co-locate compute, you know, persistently? And, um, and then how much of the compute is done at the edge? Um, the reality is that you're probably going to see uh, you know, customers do both. Um, there is more data created at the edge than in the, in the history you know, before. And uh, you, you'll see a lot of the data management companies invest in software-defined solutions that require very small footprint, both from the storage point of view as well as um, you know, compute. One of the uh, you know, advantages of a uh, technology like ONTAP is uh, the investment that has been made to enable data reduction because you know, the, your ability to store data at the edge is not really you know, very good. So you want to have these capabilities to reduce the footprint by compression, by deduping, by compacting that data and then making some smart decisions uh, at the edge. Uh, you know, perhaps do some in, in line, in place analytics there and moving some of the data um, you know, back into a central data center where you know more batch analytics you know can can uh, you know can take place. But when you talk mm -hmm. about that compaction, deduping, um, uh, there was one more, but I think everyone gets the point. Are are you talking about having uh, a NetApp on tap device near the edge or on, uh, at and, the edge? And that device, mm -hmm. it's actually software only. Ah, um, you so guys would probably. Uh, um, are aware of the fact that um, ONTAP now ships uh, in three flavors or, or three form factors. There is an engineered appliance and we will likely do that for many years to come, but we also have ONTAP running in a virtual environment, either on KVM or, or VMware, as well as ONTAP running in the cloud. We've been running in the AWS cloud since 2014. We're also running in the Azure cloud. We are talking to other you know, vendors to um, uh, to improve the ubiquity of, of software defined ONTAP. So, um, just to be really specific, we're told now that an edge gateway, not an edge device, the gateway is about two gigs in memory and two cores. Um, is that something a software defined on tap would run on? Uh, abs absolutely, right? You, you'll okay. see us um, you know, running um, you know, uh, in, in a, on a variety of uh, devices in the field with uh, energy companies. Um, you'll see, um, you know, on tap running in the in the tactical sphere, you know, with, and we have projects that I can't really, you know, you know, tell you about, but um, you'll you'll find it broadly deployed on the edge. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's yeah. Oh, yeah, talk a little bit about NetApp. Uh, what are some of the business outcomes you're looking for here? Do you have good executive sponsorship of these initiatives? So we are very excited to be here. Mm -hmm. um, NetApp has been a in, in the data management uh, realm for a, for a very very long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, analytics uh, is a natural place, you know, uh, a great adjacency, you know, for us. Um, we've been very fortunate to work with uh, NoSQL type of companies. Mm -hmm. We've been, uh, you know, very happy to collaborate with uh, some of the, uh, the, the leaders in, um, in analytics, such as uh, Databricks. Uh, we are entering the IoT space and enabling uh, solutions that are really edge, edge focused. Um, so overall, um, this is this is a great fit for us, and, and we're very excited to participate at, at the summit. Mm -hmm. So, so um, what do you think will be? Um, we've we've heard from Matei that sort of the the state of the art in terms of I hate to say the word it's 
fantasy, but like experimentation perhaps, <laughs> is you know, stru structured streaming, so continuous apps, which are calling on uh, deep learning models. Um, where, would you, where would you play in that, and, and what do you think, what are the barriers there, what comes next? I think um, any analytics, uh, complete analytics solution um, will need a bunch of services and, and some infrastructure that lends itself for um, that type of a workload, that type of a use case. So you'll need, um, in, in some cases, very fast storage mm -hmm. with super low latencies. Um, in, in some cases, you will need uh, tremendous throughput. Um, in some cases, you will need that small footprint of of an operating system running at the edge to enable that um, some of that inline you know processing. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think the market will uh, will evolve very fast. The solutions will evolve very fast, and you will need um, the type of uh, industry sponsorship by by companies that really understand data management and that have made it their business for a very very long time. So I see that that synergy that is being created you know, between the innovation and analytic, analytics, um, the innovation that happens in, in the cloud, and the innovation that a company like NetApp does around the data fabric and around the type of services that are required for, um, you know, to govern, to, to move, uh, to secure, to protect that data in a very cost efficient way. Okay, this is, this is kind of key because people are struggling with having some sort of commonality in their architecture between the edge, you know, on-prem and the cloud, and, um, but it could be at many different levels. What's, the, what's your sweet spot for offering that? I mean, you talked about, you know, uh, deduping and... Um, I, compression you know, and compaction. Compression yeah. and snapshots or whatever. So, having, having that available in different, you know, in different form factors, what does that enable a customer to do, perhaps using different software on top? So I'm, I'm glad that you asked. Um, the reality is that we want to enable customers to consolidate both second and third platform um, applications on the ONTAP operating system. And uh, customers will, will find not only flexibility, but consistency on the data management, regardless of where data, data is, whether it's in the cloud, near the cloud, or on the edge. So we believe that we have the, the most flexible um, you know, solution to enable you know, data analytics, uh, data management, uh, that lends itself you know, for all these use cases uh, that, that enable next generation type of applications. Okay, huh? and, but is that predicated on having not just um, data on tap, but also a common application architecture on top? I think we want to enable you know, um, a, a variety of solutions being you know, based there. So in some cases, we're building uh, glue. What do I mean by glue? It's, for example, an NFS to HDFS connector that enable that translation from okay. the native format you know, for most of the data and, and a Hadoop or, or Spark you know, type of EMR you know, system. Okay. So we're investing in enabling that flexibility and, and enabling that innovation that would happen you know, by, by many of the companies that we see here on the floor today. Okay, that makes sense. We have just a minute to go here before the break. So, uh, if you could talk to the entire Spark community, and you are right now on theCUBE, uh, what's on your wish list? What do you wish people would do more of, or if you could get help with something, what would it be? Well, I think, uh, you know, my ask is continue to innovate, uh, push boundaries, um, and, and continue to be, you know, clever in, in partnering, you know, both with, uh, you know, with small vendors um, that, that are really innovating with tremendous space, as well as with established vendors that uh, are, you know, have really made the data management, you know, uh, their business for, for many years and, and are looking to participate in the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Let's innovate together. All right. Very good. Octavian, thank you so much for taking some time here uh, out of your busy day to share with theCUBE, and we appreciate your Very good. Here. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thanks, Octavia. <laughs> thank you. That's right, you're watching theCUBE here at Spark Summit 2017. We'll see you in a few minutes with our next guest.